Hello and welcome to the Honey Hames blog. Today we're going to be looking at liner lock knives. In particular, we're going to focus down on these five knives here. So what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about what a liner lock is. We'll talk about some of the good and the bad things that are involved, bad points about liner lock knives. We'll go a little bit into each of the knives themselves, and then we'll sort of summarise about sort of a little bit more about the liner locks. So we'll go straight into it. No messing around. So we'll be looking at today. The Magnum Bulldog, the Real Steel H6, the Spyderco Tenacious, the Columbia River Drifter, and the the Kershaw Shuffle. These are all five of these knives, or knives that we sell here at Heine Hain. So if we'll give you a bit of an idea, and if you are interested, I'll put the links at the bottom of this video, and I'll also put them on the blog as well, so you can have a look at the knives in a bit more detail, and look at the specifications of them. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the actual liner lock itself. So, what is a liner lock? So if we close it up, essentially blade opens gets put in a locked position. The reason for that locked position is you'll see a liner come out here. What that does, is I get the right angle, is that goes to the base of the blade, preventing the blade from coming back. In order to close your blade, you have to move that to the side, and then the blade can close, like so. Hopefully you can all see that, so I'll do it one more time. So we'll open the blade, See, it's not in place. Do that. Springs across. Blade is now locked. In order to bring the blade back in, manually push it across. Blade folds back in. Hopefully that's nice and clear for you guys on the video. Just, if you prefer things to be written down, we'll have this in the we'll have it written down in the blog, so we'll have a bit more detail about line locks themselves. Okay, so we'll talk about what's good about a line lock. So I'll, again, I'll use the Magnum Bulldog as the as a demonstration knife of choice today. So, what single hand open and close? So, as I'll do that, demonstrate, open, close again. Very, very easy. They are safe from accidental closures. So, unlike in the UK, we've got the, you can't, it, it's not UK friendly carry, so you can't carry it around with you wherever you want. So, because of the locking feature, but it is now safe from accidental closures. So, if I put any pressure down through there, Blade's not going to come down, it's held in place by the liner lock. You should, in the past, there have been a few problems with liner locks. If you look at a lot of reviews, if people do have very really mixed opinions of liner locks, but they are the most popular lock, lock, locks on lock, most locking feature on, on locking knives, and that is for good reason. They are good locks, especially from the big brands, really, really trustworthy. Um, smooth opening and closing features on these knives, because then it's not spring action, really, really smooth. There we are. Final thing I want to mention, which is really good about line locks, they are pretty easy to keep clean. Other other uh, locking mechanisms, such as lock backs, is is much harder to keep clean. And when, if they get dirty, they're more likely to fail. So with these, much easier to keep clean, back in, really nice and smooth. Okay, I I must, I'll choose a different knife now to look at the thing. We'll look at the real steel, yeah? So, um, in terms of problems with line up knives, on occasions you do find, you may find that the knife you get doesn't lock properly. It is a potential with any locking joint, this isn't just with liner locks. So whenever you do buy a knife, do make sure you check and make sure that the locking mechanism in here, see on here, yeah, is going out all the way and is does stop the blade. Any problems, send the knife straight back to where you got it from and they should be able to send you a replacement or get in contact with the manufacturer and they'll be able to talk you through it. Regular and prolonged use of line locks will wear them down so you will f potentially find that the joint becomes a lot more free moving after a period of time. This is natural but it does mean that there is a greater risk of the lock, of, of the lock failing. So do keep an eye on that, do keep it lubricated do tighten it up every now and then. 
The final thing I want to say, which is a potential negative, it does rely on friction between the lock bar end and the blade tang. So here's the system. Some friction right in, in this gap. Yeah, let's get the right angle. Right in there. So what happens is if that if it gets do too much wear and tear, if dirt starts getting in there under over lubrica lubrication, the blade starts becoming a bit wobbly, it will affect the locking mechanism. So do keep do keep an eye on that and do because that will potentially have consequences on the locking mechanism failing. Overall though, these are problems or similar problems you can get with any lock, lock, locking mechanism. So don't say anything, oh, liner locks, they've got two, pro two or three potential problems on there, I'm not going to get one. Far from the case, the vast, vast majority of liner locks we found are absolutely perfect, brilliant. As long as you keep an eye on them, keep, keep watching them, absolutely fine. Okay, so what it is, I'm going to go into the, into the knives a bit more, let's close these down first. Right, so the individual knives, and we'll start off with the Magnum Bulldog, let's get it over and don't we? See here, it's a big knife, big chunky knife here, big thick blade down there, doesn't peter off until the end to there, so it, it actually, a lot of people we found is, if you're going to use it, archers have used these quite a lot, we've sold them too, because the blade doesn't like snap off, it's really really strong right up until the end there. Some of the other features, oblong hole here, so it allows for right and left hand opening so you know it from either side clip, quite a high carry clip, so most of the most of the knife will go in your pocket, so you only see that much over the top it is quite a big blade, so if you do have tiny pockets then it may not fit in there as well however, over there a little bit of jimping on the top there, so it keeps your thumb nice and strong so if you hold that knife in there, nice strong, nice bit of grip on there the next blade we're going to look at is the Real Steel H6. Lovely little orange handle there. You can get the handle in other colours if you aren't interested in the orange. This one is a little bit different. This has thumb studs. So you can see the one thumb stud there. So again, left and right hand opening in there. Single up, back, close it up. Thumb studs make it easy for both hands. Blade teepers off lot further down so it ha is a, a little bit weaker at the end however it is quite a big blade it's quite a strong blade so if you look in there all the angles in for you carry clip on there really high carry clip Oops, this up. means is when you put it in your pocket you don't see less than that so it is really really concealed when you have it in your pocket quite a big Quite nice to carry, see it here, hold entire hand visit, a little bit out the back there, quite comfy. A little bit of jimping on the top there. Ooh. Spider Co. Classic Spider Co round hole opening and closing, really easy. Any Spider Co knife, you can see, again, quite a high carry clip in it here. So it comes to about that high in your pocket. So quite concealed again. Normal liner lock in there. Nice grip on the handle there, if you can see the patterning on there. Really nice to hold, nice feel. It's got a thumb ramp and jimping on there. So it is really, I find this one really, really comfortable to hold. I don't know if we can get a good angle in there. Really, really comfortable. So the other ones, you get, you, uh, your, your thumb is flat. This one it just goes onto a nice little ramp, they're really, really comfortable. Move that back here. The Columbia Rift Drifter G10. This is a nice little blade. So this is a part this is the part serrated version of the knife. It's both seen there. Uh, this has got thumb holes in there. Thumb stud, sorry. Thumb studs for opening. Nice and easy. Nice close. This is the smallest of the knives we've seen so far. So if you can see it on my hand there. If I open it fully. So about the length of my hand from wrist from wrist to the top of my little finger. Nice little blade. Feels quite nice, feels quite sturdy. Small little bit of jimping in there. Doesn't really stop the thumb from sliding much though, so my thumb does still carry on sliding over there. 
if you want a little bit of a smaller blade, your little finger, oh, yeah, little finger does sort of come off the end there, but it's actually very, very comfortable to hold. I'm actually really impressed with how that feels. The uh, the the pocket clip doesn't interfere at all with the grip. It actually feels quite comfortable. You don't really notice it in there. Very, very nice. Final blade. We'll look at Kershaw Shuffle in white. We think that looks great here. There we go. So. There isn't there, finger choil. So actually your finger comes partially over the blade there. Nice. Thumb stud oh there. Thumb studs for opening again, left and right hand opening again, as the same with all the other knives. Lovely. At the back there, yeah, we've got a screwdriver. We've also got a bottle opener. This is a very versatile tool here. Pocket clip. Again, pretty much covers the entire blade, so if you had it in your pocket, you'd only be able to see that much. Of course, got a roll, hole here for a lanyard as well, so it sits right at the top, sits covers nicely in the pocket, so it is nice and concealed. You don't have people seeing that you've got a knife on you. Easy and op easy opening and close. The, the joint's a little bit stiffer on this one than some of the other ones you've seen. The only other one that probably comes close is the Columbia River knife. These ones are quite good because, in terms of safety features, the, st the stiffer the joint, the more less likely it is to close and accidentally catch your fingers. Okay, so there's enough about sort of the individual knives now. We'll go in and we'll just sort of summarise exactly. Um, go in and summarise sort of the knives. Line lock is a really, really popular mechanism, and rightly so. It is a very, very strong knife. It is very popular. It is easy for easy to make. So for people who are making knives themselves, the line lock is quite an easy joint to make. There are safety features that can come with line locks if you are worried about sort of them accidentally closing or accidentally having a bit too much wear. With the Columbia River knives, for example, they have a locks or auto locks technology. If you are, I'll put a link on that in the blog as well once we get that up. And what is that? That's a safety feature which prevent, which means you have to disengage that lock system before you can shut, before you can disengage the. Uh, if you can disengage the liner, which means you can then close the blade. Um, with each of these knives, it is completely depends on you what what knife you want. We'll just ignore the noise in the background there. It'll stop again in a second. Um, I can't even get. I'm distracted by it now. In terms of the knife, each knife is individual. Some people will prefer the big knife of the Magnum Bulldog, and some people will prefer the Kershaw Shuffle each down to their own. What I have to stress is none of these knives are UK friendly carry. So you can't walk around anywhere in the UK with them. They are, you're okay to own one, but you can't carry it around with you. Um, hopefully you found this insightful today and hopefully we've given you a bit more information. On the blog itself we'll put in a bit more detail about liner locks and sort of so we'll put some plenty of links on there to sort of have a look at these uh, locking technologies from Columbia River and other ones we have available. I think we've covered everything today. If you have any questions, any queries, please put them at the bottom of the video or please send us a message to uh, support at heine.com. We'll have a look at those and we'll see if we can.